Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on mammals. So we look at mammals, what do their name come from? It's mammary glands, it's milk. So we're first gonna talk about mammary glands and hair, which of course is another thing that uh, mammals have as a, as a unique characteristic within their class. Class mammalia is named after the fact that mothers give milk to their young with mammary glands. And it's typically delivered via nipples. The reason why I say typically uh, and it's true, yeah, 99% of the time, there are some mammals out there that don't have nipples. One example is the platypus. So the female duckbill platypus actually doesn't have nipples. She just secretes the milk out onto her fur and the baby laps it up. And she actually has mammary glands from around the armpit down to her lower leg. So there are some varieties in terms of uh, delivering that milk. But uh, yeah, the majority of mammals do have a nipple structure uh, for the baby to grass on and suck from that. If you look at this little diagram here, uh, this is what the gland looks like beneath the skin. So here is the teat. Um, here are lobes of the, the tissue that's actually producing the milk. You have milk developing in here. There are these little canals that bring it down into a sinus and it gets stored there. Um, when a female is nursing, typically these will get filled and then it's, it's time for them to get emptied and the baby will latch on to the teat, uh, to the nipple area and start sucking. Um, so that's a very common thing. It's, it's a way that uh, mothers nourish their young. Milk has uh, not only uh, carbohydrates, it has fat, proteins, um, even you can deliver antibiotics and hormones to your baby that uh, makes them more healthy and encourages a bond between the mother and the baby. So there are lots of advantages to uh, natural breast milk. And hair has numerous functions. It's not just for you know keeping them warm, uh, but that's definitely a major one. Insulation, um, insulation, keeping warm thin. Uh, if you uh, have a dog with a really really shaggy fur and it's uh, you know summertime, giving them a haircut might be like you know they they can cool off a little easier because uh, of all that hair. Camouflage. Some of them have this ability to blend into their surroundings thanks to their their fur and the coloration of it. Uh, so this particular fur patch here, um, when a bunch of these mammals are together, it'd be hard to tell them apart and tell how many there are. And also with stripes, sometimes uh, with grasses or the terrain, it's more easy for the animal to, to blend in. Sensation. Definitely um, the, the feeling ability when something just barely grazes a hair uh, that's connected inside the skin so it would stimulate nerve endings. And that's true for us too. Um, if something barely grazes against a hair, we know what that's like. Uh, waterproofing, um, having that, that, f that fur can um, definitely uh, aid with waterproofing. With some animals, if they spend a lot of time in water as a mammal, having less hair may benefit them though. Uh, because having a lot of hair when you're you know, swimming all day long can create drag. You won't be able to go as quickly through the water. And we look at dolphins and whales, that's a good example. Um, signaling. Um, there are definitely ways that animals can signal each other with hair. Uh, if you have a pet cat and your cat's ever going, you know, done that thing and had its hair stand up on end, uh, that's a sign to other animals and cats especially that uh, uh, it's, it's not playing around. And then defense, um, definitely with the, the porcupine, that's a classic example. So here's a porcupine, they have quills, uh, these hairs that can actually be shot out and um, stick into uh, a predator, and that's a way for them to not get eaten. Metabolic characteristics of mammals, so here we go. Endothermy, they are endothermic. Uh, the nickname for that, of course, is warm-blooded. I explained in a previous lesson how cold-blooded and warm-blooded is not the best term. Uh, I don't want you to misinterpret this and think that all warm-blooded mammals are always hotter on the inside than all cold-blooded animals. That's not true. Um, warm-blooded is a nickname, meaning that they're able to um, naturally heat up or cool down their body when necessary based on changes in the external environment. Uh, and there are lots of ways to do that. Um, if you think about us, um, sweating is a way that we can do that. Uh, shivering is the opposite in terms of heating up our body. Um, adjusting our uh, blood pressure can definitely change how much heat we're losing or retaining. Uh, feeding, in terms of them getting energy in their body, the, the organisms that are being eaten, they could be insectivores because they're eating insects. They could be herbivores 
eating plant material, carnivores eating other animals, omnivores, omni is what we are or naturally are supposed to be. Omni means all. So uh, humans are meant to be omnivores eating uh, animal tissue and plant tissue. Digestive tract length length does actually relate to these. When you look at an herbivore's digestive tract, if they're a strict herbivore, especially with ruminant digestion, which I'm going to cover in a sec, they have a really long intestine. It takes a lot longer to break down the plant material and get energy uh, from those uh, monosaccharides contained in the cellulose, uh, in that plant cell wall material. When you look at an omnivore's digestive tract, generally uh, it's kind of in the middle in terms of overall length, and then a carnivore's digestive tract is significantly shorter in terms of the amount of tissue and time required uh, to break that stuff down and get it absorbed into the bloodstream. Ruminant digestion, this is another variety uh, in terms of certain herbivores and what they're eating. So with a lot of the hooved mammals, um, they are eating a lot of plant material, leaves especially, and leaves are high in cellulose in terms of uh, the mass of the leaf and, and what it's got going on there. Cellulose is that plant cell wall material. It is indigestible to organisms like us. So for us, it would be fiber. It just runs right through us. We can't break it down into individual sugars for energy, but that's okay. With them, they are depending on those individual sugars to actually get energy. So what happens is ruminants actually have a special kind of bacteria in their gut that helps them break down that cellulose so uh, bacteria assists with breakdown of cellulose. And then they actually will regurgitate uh, what's called their cud, chew it again, swallow it, and they can do that several times, and um, they, they spend a lot of their day eating, but they get enough energy out of it. So thanks to the ruminant digestion and that bacteria in their gut, they can take advantage of the glucose that is inside of cellulose. With teeth, um, compared to uh, the teeth in reptiles or even the teeth in frogs and, and amphibians, you see a lot more variety in terms of teeth structure in mammals, and they're well adapted to what they eat. So the types do pertain to their diet. Here are the four main types, canines, incisors, premolars, and molars. And I'm giving you a couple examples here. Um, you can see with uh, this particular set of teeth, this is a carnivore. And you can see there are plenty of sharp teeth. Um, it needs those to, to bite down into its prey. You see the really enlarged canines and um, sharp teeth even when you go a little bit further back towards the, the premolars. Um, here, this is actually the teeth of a mouse. So they do have uh, these sharp incisors in the front, and you'll hear more about rodent teeth later on in this lesson, but they do have a lot of teeth towards the back that are modified for grinding plant material, grains and such. So the animals that spend a lot of time eating plant material tend to have flatter teeth um, that are meant for you know, this grinding. And of course, animals with the more sharp teeth, they're meant for tearing flesh. We, of course, have teeth modified for an omnivorous diet. We got some sharp ones up front, but definitely the flat molars in the back.